Also, cool, got approved for a HELOC from Navy Fed and was told I can't put my checks straight into it since it's a loan. People should know that now I have to do the constant transfer thing. Yeah. So I think you have a home equity line of credit in the second position, right? So what happens is, look, this guy's this is not a bad thing, right? This isn't, it's just a little bit of extra work, right? It's nothing crazy. How many checks are you getting in a month? 20? No. Majority of people are getting two checks a month. It's, it's nothing crazy. So you have your Navy Fed HELOC and you have your Navy Fed checking account, right? Your paycheck automatically gets deposited to your Navy Fed checking account. That same day, you wake up in the morning on Friday, on Monday, and you transfer all your paycheck into the HELOC. Done, right? And then you transfer money back out to pay certain bills that can't be paid with a credit card, that have to be paid with a debit card from my checking account, and you live your life, right? It's not that difficult. Don't overcomplicate it. Pretty simple, money in, money out. So this is not an issue. Navy Fed is pretty good with their HELOCs and their, and their credit cards. Now, I will say that Navy Fed does have pretty high rates right now, and they always have with their, with their HELOCs, so I'm not that attracted to them, but sometimes they have some pretty good you know, offers. Any benefits to using a personal loan to pay off debt or need to stick to PLOC or HELOC? Yeah, I, I've never ran a case study where it made sense to take an amortized loan to pay off another amortized loan. Like it, it just, the math doesn't math up for me because typically when you take out a personal loan, right, you're getting the full lump sum of money up front. So if you take that full lump sum of money up front to pay off a debt that you were already paying down, you have to understand that that interest more than likely is actually less than this new loan that you got, even though it may be at a lower rate, right? Let's say you got a car loan at 10,000 at 7%. And originally it was at 30,000 at 7%. And then you go and get a personal loan at 5%. So in your mind, you're thinking 10K over here at seven, 10K over here at 5%, okay? You need to make sure you look at that amortization schedule because you have to understand the original loan amount was 30,000. So that 7% rate on 10,000 is way less than 10,000 at 5% on a brand new loan. And they're probably gonna tack on an origination fee or some kind of fee, typically. There's usually fees with personal loans and they'll just throw it into the loan itself. So now it's 10.5 or 10.7, something like that. You have to understand that 5% rate, you're at the beginning of that 5% rate. So if you're thinking, okay, that 10,000 at 7% over here and the payment was 500 bucks and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay off that loan amount, I'm gonna get this 500 and my monthly payment over here is 250 at 5%. So now what did you do? You got 500 bucks to be paying 500 over here plus whatever other cash flow you had, I, you're probably not gonna go that fast or faster than if you would have just made extra payments on that particular debt. So I, I really do not see the, the advantage often. It, I, it's just not there. Probably better off sticking with your PLOC or HELOC even when those rates are say higher. Again, we can manipulate that much easier than you can with a brand new amortized loan. Much easier to manipulate.